was asked to um, join in um, a reading of Jabberwocky, which I did, but I've already kind of stolen the best bits. Um, so it's using Carol's invented words in a very similar territory to the last one, except that this one has been permeated, haunted, and um, infested by the First World War. And I don't know why I am, but it, it's, it's an image which keeps coming through and won't escape. So it's called um, Neovorpal. Neovorpal, alas, but in these fogs it won't cut. And the prey's piteous tears are sucked by the arid coke that the prophet never allowed. And all the time we walk in arm's reach of lit beings that won't stalk our ripples of shudder, but allude to them in jest. Beamish be they, affront an old galliard wheel, whose lost spokes are nought but the gnarled father's jewellery teething scrotal language of gum, princely and squalor, gallant in heart. Moon breaths wait a slangy raft of ancient number, for to catch this little saint adrift, bouncing between geriatric waves and cock-filled seeds of bliss, anvil to wee without an ember's kiss, whiffling, preemptive from coming home. The great war, ten years off, doesn't stop the mangled dead from queuing above the tolly wood, all used up for furnishings, moist, Edwardian and troublesome, a seance's brown lip varnished to a heaviness on the outside, the inside rising to fletch those that came too early, broken back through the dismantled glade. Tum tum tree. Gutted and hung festive. Private Manson, ships hindering the waves home, where disbelief is heavier than clouds reflected in their banded water in between. A gyre swaddling the forgot, using ripple and tide to heave out the frumious shallowings that gone before. Packing the stone churches, exchanging visions for names and reopening them as museums of doubt. But brilliant mornings are still transfused from grandfather's memories, vivid, close and nascent, where he saw the prophet in his late garden as a child, peering over a wall, earwigging, the man talking to himself. 